All right. Well, it is 3 o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started uh, with the webinar today. We appreciate you all joining us here for this third session of the NJCA Ford webinar series. Uh, my name is Brian Luckett. I'm the Chief External Affairs and Development Officer with the NJCA National Office. Um, and as we've been doing uh, with this webinar series, uh, is really focusing on our NJCA Forward campaign of being strong, focused, and together as we as the NJCA uh, go through this situation with COVID-19. Um, today's session is focused on student athlete health and safety at home. We've got a great group of panelists today to be able to share some experiences and thoughts with you guys on this topic. Um, just like we've done with the other sessions, after we hear from each of our panelists today, we'll have a Q&A at the end. If you have any questions, you can put them into the uh, chat feature that you can find there at the bottom of Zoom, um, or feel free um, to email them uh, to our office as well. Um, you can either email them to me, bluckett at, at njca.org, um, or you can use that chat feature that's there. Uh, but our panelists today, uh, we have Kristen Mason, who's the head athletic trainer at Indian Hills Community College. Um, and then we also have uh, Mr. Uh, Mike Record with Lackawanna, and he's the strength and fitness coach there. And then we also have uh, two special sponsors with us today um, in Arise and Privet, um, who you hear from. So again, we thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, but without further ado, I'll turn it over to Ms. Kristen Mason. Again, she's the head athletic trainer at Indian Hills Community College. Uh, started there in 2016 after a career, uh, part of her career she spent in healthcare, um, and she was actually just named the 2020 NJCA Athletic Trainer of the Year, um, inaugural world award, first time that we had that, and she was selected as the winner of that this year. So I'll now turn it over to Kristen and the presentation that she has. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me on here today. Um, Gosh, when they asked me to do this, I thought, I mean, I don't, I don't think we're doing anything different than anyone else, but um, I'm excited to just kind of share what we found has been working for us over the last, gosh, almost eight weeks now. Um, and without further ado, we'll just get uh, rolling with it. So we found out, I'm going to give you a little bit of a timeline. So we found out um, about... May, or March 12th, everything was a go. Um, everything was normal. We were operating like normal here in Iowa. Um, we were gearing up to um, head to Hutch for our um, national basketball tournament. Um, we were going to leave that Sunday and everything was good to go. And then the 13th, um, we got the email that the basketball tournament was postponed. And then the 15th, we got an email from our president that we were canceling classes on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and we were gonna, you know, try to figure out how to go online format and then thing, things just kind of spiraled from there. So I think we can all understand and we've all felt how fast this thing moved um, and things still to this day are changing um, every second. And so we've just really tried as a staff to communicate communicate with our athletes um, and take it from there. So um, the first thing that we did was try to figure out which of our athletes were going to go home, who was staying on campus at that point. We were still um, allowing um, kids to be on campus with us here. Um, who had just had surgery? We had some kids who had just had labral repairs on their hip. We had some UCL repairs. I mean, we had a ton of post-surgical um, athletes in March. So trying to figure out were those kids going to stay with us? Were they going to go home? What was happening? Um, who was doing rehab or coming back from an injury at that point? Um, and then who was just kind of doing some maintenance plans? And so um, at that point, I had two assistants, Ben and Laura. And so we just kind of got together and um, sorted that out. We had some meetings, um, wrote went through all the rosters. I asked Ben and Laura to go through every team roster and figure out um, who was staying. So we contacted coaches, um, we contacted the athletes themselves and just made lists. And then once we had done that, we figured out, we started um, with those kids that were post-surgical that we knew were gonna go home because those um, seem to be the most time sensitive. And so we worked with those kids, spent a lot of time on the phone, um, worked with our team orthopedic doctor, 
and made sure we had um, physical therapy scripts or you know places figured out for them um, to continue their rehab and continue their treatments at home. Um, I think at that point, none of us really knew how long this was going to last. So um, initially, we just you know did the six week script like everybody does and went from there. Um, it was a lot of just trying to find clinics that were still seeing patients. It was, it, it was tough as you guys have all um, experienced in your, in your life, but continuing to communicate with them was huge. Um, once we had gotten all of those post-surgical students sorted um, and their appointments set up and um, records transferred from our orthopedic doctors and our EHR systems. Um, then we moved on to those um, kids that were in the middle of rehab that just needed to transition to home rehab. Um, so we did that, um, made uh, videos for them, um, FaceTimed with them, Zoomed with them. Um, Healthy Roster is our EHR system that we use. Um, every day to document our injuries. They have messaging capabilities, so text capability in the actual um, app. And so we would message back and forth with our athletes that way. Um, we're able to send out mass um, communication to all of our coaches and every team. So we utilize that. Um, Healthy Roster also has a video chat capability now. Um, so we were doing some work with some of our athletes that way. Um, and then the thing that we really love about Healthy Roster and has helped us out is you can upload progress notes right from the app on their phone. Um, and then they can also report new injuries to us that way. So they, if something happens to them or they have an issue while they're there, they can just um, click that documentation tool in the app and it comes, sends us a message right to us so we can reach out to them right away. Um, so a lot of video conferencing is what we did with our athletes and just making sure that they knew to reach out to us at any time that even though we weren't um, seeing them every day at their appointment times um, that we still wanted to hear from them and we still expected them <laughs> to keep doing their rehab um, and making sure that they were you know coming through those injuries okay so um, I would say the most important thing again, like I've said, is just communication with every single athlete. So um, like I said, Ben and Laura reached out to every athlete on every roster. Um, if we couldn't get a hold of them, we reached out to the coaches to make sure that they were doing okay or if they had heard from them. Um, and then one other thing that we had done last year is implemented an exit physical protocol. And so every single athlete of ours either fills out this exit physical or they fill out um, a waiver that says they don't want to do the exit physical. And so by doing that, we're ensuring that they're leaving our campus healthy, or if they're not healthy, that we're aware of the issues that they're having. Um, clearly this year, the end of the school year was much faster than we thought. So we had a little bit of a problem on our hands. We were trying to figure out how to get those as exit physicals into their hands, how to make sure they filled them out. Um, one of the thoughts we had was we were going to call every single athlete and fill that out um, while we were on the phone with them. Um, and so what we ended up doing was we got with our marketing and our IT departments here on campus and we started um, or we implemented a fillable form. So they took our exit physical um, and they made it into a fillable form that we were able to email out to, to every single athlete. They can fill it out and then they were able to electronically sign it. And so when those forms started coming back in, um, you know, one of the questions we ask, um, did you, um, did you have any serious injuries or illnesses this year? Um, did you have any major surgeries? Do you have any um, more concerns? Has anything new come up? Um, do you want to speak with the athletic trainers or the team physician about anything at this point? Those are some of the example questions we had. Um, and then if they answer yes to any of those or write down something that's continuing to bother them, um, then we are in the process of getting a hold of all of those kids and 
um, figuring out what exactly they, they, what exactly our next step needs to be at this point. So um, that was, I think I'm, I'm proud of our staff for kind of figuring out how to implement that because that was a really tough obstacle for us at that point. Um, okay, and then as far as our staff goes, you know, I was telling the guys yesterday um, on the panel that at, us as athletics people were people people. And so I think it's been really hard not to be around, you know, our staff. I love our staff um, and our athletes. And so it's been hard not to be with everybody all the time. So we do a weekly Zoom meeting every week at nine. Um, we have a group chat that we keep in touch with. We call, we text, we, um, we communicate almost every day and have um, of this, what trouble we're having, um, what we need help with, et cetera. Um, and then we, we created a project list of things that we were gonna be able to work on um, at home or you know not with each other every day. And so that was updating policies and procedures. We do that every year as all of you do, um, but really diving in and changing some things that we've kind of put on the back burner um, we updated our emergency action plans. Um, we improved our concussion protocol greatly, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I put Ben in charge of that and he really took it and ran with it. So we were able to get that going. Um, we're implementing a concussion return to learn protocol. And so we've um, got people across campus So our assistant athletic director, myself. Um, I'm also a faculty member on campus. so. Um, involving faculty. We're involved um, four faculty members from different areas across campus and then our disability services. So we're in the process of um, implementing that and then refining our check-in processes for the fall um, for all of our sports teams. So just coming up with ideas that we can work on while we're at home, keep ourselves busy. Um, we've been really fortunate that none of us have had to be furloughed. Um, we're all employed by the college, and so um, we just really want to make sure that we're we're making the most of our time. Um, and then one other thing, you know, across campus, we've really been um, able to implement some things uh, in the mental health game. This year, we just um, started, or we just were able to get a full-time uh, mental health counselor on campus, and so she has. Um, really implemented some things while this is all going on. So um, let me, I don't want to misquote her, telemental health, she said, um, you know, if, if those kids still need to um, be seen on campus and they're on campus and they can do it safely, she's been able to do that. Um, we have a website and I've put those there. We have a CARES form um that students can or teachers or faculty members can um, put information in there if they're worried about an athlete um, or a student and um, it goes to a team that we have that reaches out and figures out um, how they can help and then the Karen counseling and prevention resource center um, is a website or that's our website that we put up there that um, has a lot of references for them so um I just, I just really think that this mental health has been such a component of this COVID-19 that we maybe didn't think about. I mean, I know personally, I have struggled. Um, like I said, we're, we're people people. So we wanna, we wanna see everyone, um, those athletes that have lost their season. So it's really important to me um, to keep in contact with my athletes and my assistants the same. Obviously we have too many athletes to do that to every single one, but um, making sure you're staying in contact with your coaches and just being a, a resource like you always are for them. Um, some of the strategies we've tried to encourage our kids to do, keep, keep being active. Um, you may not be able to go out and play a softball or baseball game, but there are things that you can do. Um, reach out to your friends and family. Um, we schedule weekly Zoom meetings with my family and, and our college friends that we haven't maybe talked to in like 20 years but so those things are positives that we can all take out of it and honestly it's okay to not be okay this might not be the best life that you're living 
um, in your opinion, and it's really difficult, but we're going to make it through um, and just don't be afraid to reach out. And really, I'm, I'm not sure what else to say. That's kind of all, that's what we've been doing at Hills to kind of get through this crazy time. All right, Kristen. Well, we greatly appreciate that presentation and um, and for you sharing that with us. And for those links that were on there, just a reminder, um, just like we were doing with the other ones, um, the, the recording of this webinar and then also the uh, slides from these presentations will be put on uh, Connect on the landing page where we have all these webinars for you to access later on as well. So you can have those links and be able to click on them too. Um, Kristen, just a couple of quick questions that came up that just are just directly tied to you that we'll go ahead and ask if that's all right. Um, sure. Some questions that come in of how many athletes do you all have? And then also how many full-time athletic trainers do you guys have? Yep. Um, we have uh, 300 student athletes this year. And then we just added um, wrestling, which will come into play next fall. Um, and then our track roster has gotten I think we have like 81 kids on it for next year. So we will be growing by about, um, I think, 80 athletes next year. But currently this year, about 300. And then there's um, three full-time athletic trainers, including myself. Um, but I'm actually three-fourths faculty um, this year. And really, it's like three-fourths faculty, three-fourths athletics. But, um, but so we did hire um, a fourth athletic trainer to help with the influx of those 80 additional athletes we're expecting for the fall. Okay. All right. Well, thank you much for that. Um, we'll have some more questions for everybody when we get to the, uh, the, the end of each of the presentations. And again, please uh, put them in the chat and we'll be able to um, get to those for everybody to answer at the end. Um, next up, we have our first sponsor just to share a few words with us. Um, we have, Shelly McClintock with Arise, um, and Arise has been a really exciting partner that we have. Um, Shelly is the co-owner and VP of partnerships uh, with Arise, and they are the official orthopedic and sports bracing provider uh, of the NJCAA. Um, so the really awesome thing with Arise is a newer company. Of, they have a lot of innovative and cost-effective products that are really making waves through the college athletics industry right now. Um, but again, they're exciting new partner, making a lot of impact on college athletics on every level. And they've really decided to uh, to want to make an impact and be a part of the NJCA as well. So, Shelly, we're glad to have you on, and I will turn it over to you. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, like Brian said, I am a co-owner co and VP of partnerships for Arise. Arise is an orthopedic brace company that's really specializing in exo performance products. And we are based in Lincoln, Nebraska. We have about 50 full-time employees, and we do sell nationwide. And the background of our company is my dad, brother, and I decided to start a company about nine years ago, and it's now formed and turned into a rise where we're super passionate about athletes, whether it's tactical athletes or the athletes that National Junior College um, works with on the daily basis. And I would say I spend probably 80% of my job working with athletic trainers, coaches, and athletes and going on the sidelines and just making sure that our products are performing in the way that they should. So that's um, a little bit of background of Arise. So we can go on to the first slide. Okay, so Exo Performance is kind of the new word that we're using to brand our company. And it's because they are products that utilize autonomy inspired technology to strengthen and support the human body. So that is just, as you see, we will, if you, if you look at our website and you look at our catalog, yes, we have a brace for everyone because we understand that athletes are going to get injured and they need to be able to rehabilitate. So we are there for that. But what we're super passionate about is our Exo Performance products, which we're going to talk a little bit more here on the next slide. So functional stability is allowing our bodies to move the way they are naturally intended and not to mess up the kinetic chain. So I don't need to read that word for you, word for word, but essentially what we do is we look at how our body functions and then we produce bracing or exo performance around our body. So if you could go to the next one. 
The iFast and the XFast are the two that are making the biggest buzz, but you can see in this video how we're different from your typical bracing. With functional um, stability, really what we're creating is that external ligament that is going to sit outside of the athlete's ankle, and that is really the only piece that's ever going to work. So when that um, athlete goes to sprain an ankle, it's going to feel the pressure, it's going to engage, and it's gonna lock that in to not allow that rotation or that sprain to happen. And then with that, because of the dynamic support, it's not going to mess up the functional stability or the kinetic chain of the rest of the body. So that's what we're super excited about with all athletes, but especially female athletes whose knees tend to go in anyways, our hips are a little bit wider. We get a lot of pressure on our knees when we're not um, using the correct, what we would say the correct bracing or taping. Um, so that's really why we're excited about our functional stability line. So hopefully that video kind of put the concept out there that I typically will show with a brace in my hand, but that video is one that can really um, show it clearer than sometimes I can say it when I'm over Zoom. So next one, next slide, awesome. Okay, here are some, some of the studies because oftentimes when we're out talking with coaches, especially athletic trainers, they want to know where we get our stats from and how we believe that our products are superior. And the one thing Arise did when we started, we decided we wanted to rise up in an industry that was slow to change. And then we all have our why, which is really powerful as to why we do this. Ours happen to be athletes. And we wanted them to have the most um, confidence when they step out on the field or court and they're performing. So we wanted to make sure that we had um, white papers and um, backing behind us. So we used a third party company. And as you guys read through these details, I won't, all, um, I won't today in detail like that, but you all can look back on these. Um, you will see the difference of how our iFast functioned versus the ASO and the tape. So that's a really good one to look back on as you're starting to evaluate our company. Okay, the next one. And then this one is really, really big for any school that has a budget, anyone who has a budget. And so if you are primarily taping your athletes, as you can see by moving over to our IFAST, which is our internal um, that goes inside a hard court shoe or XFAST that goes external, typically, um, a soccer cleat, a lacrosse cleat, a football cleat, you will see what you can um, save your budget. Um, it's over $140 per athlete, and that is just taking a basketball season and the games. No practices, um, no workouts, um, preseason, postseason, that's just in a game. So you can see that if you switch to iFast from your typical taping, how much your athletic department will save. Okay, next one. Okay, I, I know that I did that quickly because I wanted to honor the time of the other panelists, but what we would love for you guys to do, if you have any questions, reach out to me personally. Um, Zach Giannis is our um, director of athletic sales, so he typically will be doing the day-to-day -day sales, but I am the point person for junior college because it is a partnership. And also, I am super passionate about building relationships. So if you know of regional meetings coming up that you would like for someone to come in and talk a little bit more in depth, I know this was a super, super brief recap, but I can go in way more depth if you guys would like me to. I would love to come to regional meetings. If your budgets are you know, really struggling this year because of all the shutdowns and the new reality that we're in, I would love to come into regional meetings and see if we can help You know, maybe provide the drinks or provide the dessert or add some sort of value because we understand that these have been really tough times for everyone. So please reach out to me. And then we also put a link on here. Um, Zach, Alex, and I from Arise all did a live stream a few weeks ago with National Junior College. And we were so thankful for everyone that popped on there. But we have that link on our YouTube channel and it will talk in depth of these products. It'll talk in depth of our pricing for National Junior College because we go way below direct pricing for all of our schools out there who are associated with junior college. So you're getting the absolute lowest price that we can go and we're super excited about that. So any questions you can ask on here or please feel free to text me or email me and I can get you guys everything that you need. That's what happened. All right. Thank you, Shelly. We You're definitely welcome. appreciate it and definitely appreciate the partnership with you all. And 
in all of your support for, for the junior college uh, programs and uh, the NJCAA. So thank you. And thank you for helping us get our name out there. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Um, and then the, the second sponsor that we have today uh, to also speak with us is uh, Privet. And Privet is the official health information platform of the NJCAA. And we have Darby and Jody uh, with Privet joining us today. Um, so Privet, uh, really, I'll let them talk more in depth, but they have the ability to replace a lot of the paper processes, the forms, and a lot of things that athletic trainers and our departments deal with every year and be able to create digital solutions for colleges when storing all this information and being compliant um, with all of the regulations that are out there. So, you know, with that, Darby, I'll turn it over to you to, to talk more about Privet. I appreciate the time and I uh, want to thank you again for having Jody and I on. Obviously, Privet, we're very excited to start our second year as a preferred partner with the NJCAA. Uh, this has been great for us thus far, and there's a lot of great institutions we're already working with, and we're looking forward to growing with you over the next, you know, several years. So really, really thank you for having us. Um, as you mentioned, you know, Privet, as the official health information platform of the NJCAA, um, not only do we help athletic directors and athletic trainers upload and securely store the physical paperwork, but we do that in such a HIPAA compliant manner. Um, we also automate the collection of some of the other preseason medical forms and institutional forms that schools will use. We want to help eliminate the paper, but we also want to create a secure storage in one location for the athletic directors, the trainers, and those individuals in the athletic department. Um, we also work with some of the uh, NJCA eligibility forms and compliance forms, which I'll mention a little bit later. But not only automating this paperwork creates a more efficient process, but it makes it easier for the administrative staff to track and trace the completion of mandatory preseason paperwork uh, because you can see where the student athlete is in their progress in completing that mandatory paperwork on the front end. And obviously, as a proud partner of the NJCA, we have a lot of physical safeguards and necessary certifications for HIPAA compliance. Uh, we have created a platform that helps schools create an efficient process for secure collection, data reporting, and improved communication in regards to medical compliance and other NJCAA member documents. And with everything going on right now with COVID, staying connected to your student athletes and knowing where they're at in the process so that we can get them back to action faster is so, so important. Um, our automated process allows the schools to digitally store and easily access student athlete medical information. We help uh, connect the various areas of athletics and compliance as well, because obviously for an athlete to be cleared to play, this is a very important step in that process. Uh, Privet can also help the entire campus with their return to campus plan considering COVID-19. Uh, we can adapt the platforms that can be used by athletes and non-athletes on campus. We know that we're going through some very uncertain times right now. And so the ability to adapt the platform to meet the needs of not just the athletic department, but maybe um, other departments on campus is very important to us. Uh, the platform creates a secure and centralized database, uh, reducing administrative burdens while also creating easier access to critical information. Obviously, the ability to track and trace where a student athlete is in the process is very important. Uh, if you're mailing out paper documents, you have no idea how much of that's been completed before the student athlete comes back to campus. With our process, you can see where the student at is in the process, and if you need to send them a communication, give them a little nudge to say, hey, let's, let's get moving on your uh, paperwork, you can do that. Um, so it's an easier and more efficient way to make sure that when your students come back to campus, not only will all their paperwork be completed, but you'll know that before they get back, what might be missing so you can be more efficient in that process of getting them started. Um, in terms of tracking and tracing, uh, the completion of required medical and NJCA paperwork, the student athlete and staff can be uh, clearly aware of the completion status. You know, ATCs can easily connect and communicate with their athletes and remind them to access their profiles and complete necessary paperwork prior to preseason activities or even return to campus, as I mentioned. Um, we do have the ability to attach the electronic signature, and again, in a HIPAA compliant manner. And that is very important for the security, not only of the documents, but for the, the, the legal side of everything for the institutions. Um, our newest features allow athletic directors to automate and collect important NJCAA forms. 
We have automated the letter of intent process and also uh, allow safe and secure completion and collection of the eligibility affidavit. Um, as I said, we can adapt, adopt, uh, adapt the platform to include behavioral health assessments like the PHQ-9, GAD-7, which we have available. Uh, this process not only guarantees you're getting a cleaner form returned to you with electronic signatures, but also makes it more efficient. Instead of mailing this form out and waiting for a student athlete to sign it and then return it, you can have this form inside the Privet platform of the student athlete and as soon as they complete the required sections, an alert will be sent to the athletic director, to the coach, maybe to compliance. This paperwork has been done, so it can be processed in a, in a faster way and then turned over to the NJCAA, uh, making this a more efficient way of, of doing the, the, these normal day-to-day -day NJCAA forms. We do offer mobile apps. One of the mobile apps that is a free download is a sideline app, which allows athletic trainers to create incident reports and coaches can access important demographic and emergency contact information. This is a way too that they can communicate with their athletes. Uh, when you're on the sidelines, the worst thing you could do is try to be keeping notes of an injury that occurs, whether it's at practice or at a game. With a data enabled smartphone or iPad, the trainer can make a quick incident report take an image of the injury and record that, put it into the Privet system, and then they can also be sent to the student athletes so they are aware of the injury that was recorded on their behalf. Um, the Privet process has many advantages and creates a more efficient method for NJCA member institutions to streamline the medical registration process and improve athlete medical compliance. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do here is make sure that this process is not only more efficient, but is also compliant to help the schools um, get back to action sooner. Uh, we do offer, obviously, as a preferred partner, special pricing for the NJCA members, and it's based on the number of teams in your department. The number of staff members doesn't matter. You can have as many coaches attached to this as you'd like. You can have as many staff members attached as you want. We base our pricing for the NJCA based on the number of teams that you have, and it's a tiered pricing model. Obviously, the more teams you have, the different the pricing will be. Um, and we're working, you know, if we're talking about working with the entire campus, then we can build a quote based on the number of student athletes. Obviously, right now, with everything going on with COVID-19 and us, all of us just sitting and waiting to get back to action, it's important that we do everything we can so that when those students get back on campus, they'll be able to get going as fast as possible. And that's what we want to try to help you do. Brian, thank you. All right, Darby, well, thank you for the time and for you guys being here and, and sharing that information. Again, um, Arise and Privet, we thank you guys for joining us today and, and for your support of the NJCA to make things like this possible, but then also the you know time and uh, you know attention that you guys give to NJCA members across the country. So thank you all. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we do have our last presentation, last but certainly not least. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Mike Rickert. He's a strength and fitness coach at Lackawanna. Uh, he's been there since 2015 in his career. He's been in fitness and recreation, and he even holds uh, many licenses and certifications in personal fitness and training. Uh, so, Mike, we appreciate you being with us today to share a few tips and best practices, and I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Um, I am humbled to be able to talk to everyone. I am very excited. Um, to be able to do this. I love talking in front of groups, but this is definitely unique. Um, just staring at my computer and talking through there. So bear with me. I'm going to do the best that I can. Um, just like all of our other presenters, I will make sure I respect your time um, and I won't take too much of it. Um, I always start my talks. Same thing I tell my athletes. Um, more is not better. Better is better. So let's get right into it. Um, like Brian said, I am from Lackawanna College in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I am the, my official title, title is Director of Physical Health and Wellness, but one of my main duties is Strength and Conditioning Coach for the majority of our student athletes and teams. Um, very unique times for coaches and strength coaches. It is definitely not something I was not prepared for. Um, and all the trainings and certifications and education that I've gone through, this is something that I never thought I would have to do. Um, and I think what it even made it more difficult for me is I am terrible with technology, but um, I am doing the best that I can. Um, 
So I'm just gonna, we're gonna move on to that next slide. Um, something that we were able to do that I was able to put together for all of our student athletes was an eight week program. And below that is the link. So whenever you guys have a chance, you could click on that. Um, just get an idea of what we have put together for our student athletes. Um, but it basically contains four days a week for those eight weeks. Each workout contains some movement prep, warm up, and depending on what day of the week it is, some speed, agility, and conditioning. Um, there's a plyometric element, um, body weight strength training, um, static stretching. And then what I think has been really the most important, even though it's been the most time consuming kind of, um, is there's an exercise description or demonstration. Um, especially for my spring athletes who just came on campus on January, um, I didn't get too much time with them. Um, so for me to be able to safely show them or execute you know, how to do a certain exercise is very important to me since one of my big things is you know, prohibiting um, any kind of sports injuries. Um, there is no equipment needed for these eight week workouts. Um, they have been used a lot. I've got a lot of great feedback from our athletic coaches and from our athletic students. Um, but I'm really gonna probably get into football since that is my main source of time that's spent. Um, to the right is what I use for motivation for our football guys. And we were in the National Junior College Athletic Association National Championship game last year and lost a tough game to Mississippi Gulf Coast. Um, lost that one late in the second half, but that is my motivation to our football guys if they don't want to go through their workouts at home. Um, same thing, I have an eight week body weight program that we do, but it's more geared towards the football player. Um, before we left campus, before campus was closed, um, I'm very close with our football staff. So we had a nice talk on how we want to be um, the most prepared football team um, when we go into shutdown and what are we going to do for each guy. Um, so we have spent a lot of time even doing specialized programs for each player. Um, so for example, if we are lucky enough to have some athletes who have full gyms in their house, um, some athletes have nothing where they use that body weight program. And then we have some who may just have a plate or a kettlebell or one dumbbell. Um, so I probably programmed probably anywhere between like 55 to 70 individual programs just based on any equipment that our players have. Um, that has also been very time consuming, but I think um, it has been the most rewarding for me. We have used a lot of video messages. Um, so I will demonstrate some exercises and send them out to them because we have a lot of guys who are doing some exercises they may not have done with me in the weight room. Um, for instance, maybe just like a dumbbell hang clean. Um, so I will you know, video that and send that out to them when they have questions. Another way that we use videos a lot is a lot of our athletes will FaceTime me or video me and say, coach, you know, am I doing this right? How's my form? How's my stance? Um, where can you cue me? How can you help me out? So that has been unique, something that I never thought I would be able to do, um, but we are doing it and keeping our athletes safe. Um, of course, like everyone during this time, there has been a lot of text, um, phone calls and Zoom meetings. Uh, we try to have weekly Zoom meetings with them um, I love to see the guys and see how they're doing to let them know that they can reach out to me at any time. I think some of them feel like, you know, they're going to bother me. Um, some of the football guys that I have really good relationships with and that I've known for the past year and a half um, have called or text or FaceTime me at 11, 12 o'clock at night because that's when they're doing their workout. And I am helping them um, doing whatever we can. Um, football is a very big part of our athletic program. We have a bunch of Power Five guys that are graduating um, right now, and we have probably what I've been reading is the number one defensive back in the country on our roster. So um, not only you know we are preparing these guys to go on to their four-year school. You know he has I think like 25 Power Five offers. So there are a lot of phone calls that I am placing to him and make sure that he's staying on his diet. Um, and making sure he's getting into strength training as best as we can. Um, the next slide just shows how we are getting creative. And I have FIO, and that is something that we use a lot at Lackawanna. It's figure it, figure it out. Um, that is the PG version of what we do um, with football. But just some examples of stuff that we have used for our guys that don't have any kind of equipment in their homes. Um, we've used backpacks, suitcases, chairs, stairs, tables, towels, milk jugs, and my favorite, siblings. Um, with backpacks and suitcases, um, I suggested loading them up with bricks or with 
books, whatever we can to add weight. And they've done their pushes or their pulls or overhead squats, um, lunges um, with their backpacks or suitcases, chairs we use for rear foot elevated squats, um, feet elevated push up, the same with stairs. Um, tables is something, I know I didn't come up with it, but it's something I really didn't think of until I talked to one of our offensive linemen because we have them doing a lot of inverted rows since they're really not capable yet of doing pull-ups. Um, one of our offensive linemen asked me you know, what he can do to continue doing that. And then for some reason, it just clicked in my head. Um, let's get underneath the table to do our inverted rows. Um, towels we use to simulate bands sometimes if we do pull apart or simulate bow slides to do some kind of either lower or upper body movements. Um, milk jugs, you know, to simulate any kind of kettlebell skills. And then siblings, I've had a couple athletes that all I have access to is my younger brother. And I said, as long as you get permission from him and your parents, we'll figure something out for you. Um, something also that we've been doing since we have a lack of resistance is we've been doing a lot of isometric holds for our lower body. Um, so I just put a video together today um, that I'm sending out to our guys later um, that have, you know, isometric holds. So if we're doing a split squat, we're gonna hold the split squat for 20 seconds, and then we do 10 reps per side. If they wanna be challenged a little bit more, we're doing that isometric hold for 30 seconds, and then we're doing the actual repetitions for, for 15. So like we always like to say at Lackawanna, we like to figure it out. Um, that goes to my next slide, um, where we talk about our home videos. At the request of our athletic director, um, she asked if I could put some stuff together, not just for our athletes, but for all of our students, all of our faculty, all of our staff, and anyone who's connected with us on social media. Um, I've been doing three to four a week. Um, like I said, they're intended for anyone. Um, they're meant to be fun. They're nice short videos, nothing, lo nothing longer than two minutes. Some of the exercises are some high intensity interval training. Um, we've done some at home strength training ideas. Um, some of the stuff that we've used for football as an example. Um, we've done some agility moves. We've done stretching since a lot of us are spending more time sitting, whether it's on a couch or at the kitchen table or at your desk chair. So we've done some hip mobility, some hamstring stretches. Um, one of my favorite, because I am a big mantra guy, is uh, Motivational Mondays, where you know I'll give them my motivational quote for the week or my mantra for the week. And we have our guys, you know, or whoever is responding on social media, you know, give us their mantra for the week. And then in my household, we love pizza on Fridays. So we have a pizza Friday workout where we do a little bit more of high intensity interval training, you know, for anyone who wants to do their workout on their pizza Friday. And then the last slide, and then I would love to open it up to questions if anyone has any. It's just one of the mini fitness challenges that I did. This one was just the most popular one. Um, it was a, intended for any student, staff, faculty, and of course our athletes. And it was just a simple March Madness fitness bracket. Um, that was broken up into four regions and included an upper, lower, cardio, and abdominals. Um, we had a lot of our staff and faculty do these. They had to put their brackets online and do their championship bracket, you know, and tag us on, on Twitter. Um, and they got, you know, a prize through the athletic department for just making sure that we are keeping everyone active during these um, challenging times. But like I said, I wasn't going to keep you long. I hope you're able to get something from it. Um, like I said, more is not better, better is better. So I'm hoping you got something from this. And Brian, I'll shoot it back to you. And I thank you for your time. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. We appreciate you joining us. And you've definitely uh, guilted me and what I've done during this quarantine. Uh, no physical activity other than walking to the kitchen and back. So listen, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a distance runner. So I said once I was sent home and I didn't know I was going to be home for this long that I was gonna have like my quarantine running streak. So I'm at day like 62 or whatever. So I am falling apart. So I'm, I'd rather be where you're at right now. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for joining us and, and sharing a lot, of, uh, a lot of tips and best practices there. We thank you. All right, well, we now have the Q&A session. We've had a lot, of, we had a lot of great questions already in the chat feature, but if you guys have any, again, feel free to go and, and put them in chat right now. But we'll start with uh, some of the questions that are there. Um, Kristen, one of the questions that, that came in for you is, um, do you all have a plan for the fall as far as social distancing? And how do you plan to change or accommodate athletes in what you guys do? Uh, great question. Um, we have just started talking about what that might look like for fall. So, I mean, at this point, we don't. We just, um, I sent out the NCAA um, recommendations for their return to sport. 
um, to my staff this week um, to just look at it, to hopefully get their minds um, working and, and relate it to how we can maybe work that into our um, situation here. Um, I just talked to Brett, our athletic director, about that as well. So those are things that we are um, talking about. Um, but at this point, we don't have any, you know, set in place plans yet. All right. And, um, you know, th this question would apply to, to any of you guys, the panelists, and even um, uh, Arise and their products, I guess, as well. But what essential supplies and equipment uh, will you guys need ASAP? And then also, how will you care for the equipment now with kind of this new normal and, uh, and, and what we've had with COVID-19? And, and Mike, we can start with you on this question, and then uh, Kristen, and uh, then if uh, Shelly has anything to add as well. Hold on, Mike, we have to unmute you just real quick. There you go, you should be good now. Okay, good. I'm a little concerned about, about the facility just because I'm not there and I'm a very hands-on coach. I need to make sure everything's okay. Um, I'm also concerned about where we'll be in a two weeks, two months, um, especially when it comes, you know, football wise. So, you know, we have a lot of things planned in place of how we can get guys equipment. Um, I'm hoping at least, you know, that maybe some commercial gyms or school gyms will, will open up and that will, you know, solve my equipment problem right now. Uh, am I next? <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think, I think for us, we obviously PPE or, you know, personal protective equipment is going to be huge for us treating athletes. Um, but, you know, there's a shortage on cleaning supplies. So I don't know. I mean, I think that's going to be a little bit of a tough challenge. Um, we already give every single athlete their own water bottle. So, you know, in regards to trying to make sure we're not sharing germs um, in that sense, we've already implemented things like that. Um, but again, gloves, masks, obviously, um, you know, I don't know. And then we're going to have to figure out what's, what's safe and how to clean um, any of the equipment, our game readies, our STEM machines, all of that stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot to figure out right now. And I don't know that anybody really has the right answers. Shelley? Yeah, um, from what we're hearing with the athletic trainers we're working with is they're really interested just from the Arise vantage point because return to play might be quicker than maybe they wanted. Um, just the IFAST and the XFAST to really help prevent those ankle injuries and our hammy because unfortunately there might be an increase of hamstring injuries, we hope not. And another thing that our company has done is we've been able to get some PPE products in to really help with um, just the high need. So if that's a need in National Junior College with anyone, let us know and we can try to see what great pricing we can do there. We're just, we're really not doing it to make money. We're really just doing it to help our partners since we had connections there, but we are just going to try to be there to provide as much support to the athletic trainers we can. Um, because like, like everyone is kind of saying, we don't really know what it's going to look like. So as the needs arise, well, no pun intended, we'll, we'll be there. So. There you go. Um, a little bit um, a segue from, from that question uh, for, for Mike. And uh, how big of an impact does COVID-19 have on your off-season programs? And you mentioned with football coming up. Um, and then another question to kind of go with that is, too, is, you know, will, the, will your gym and facilities be open this summer? Or is that even being discussed right now? Is there some um, of the questions? Yeah, like I said, we since we are, we are following the guidelines that our the state of Pennsylvania gives us as far as when we are going to open. So as of right now, we are still in in our, the red. So we have no plans at opening right now. Um, I know, especially football wise, our guys will are supposed to be on campus in late July. So nothing has changed yet, but we are preparing as if you know we may have a delayed start or or something, you know, on that on that hands. Um, what was the beginning of that first question, though, Brian? I'm sorry. In regards to your off-season programs, how that's impacted, you know, obviously because, you know, we have summer um, workouts and right. with football missing out on spring and things. So how, does it off, um, how has it impacted your off-season program right. leading up to well, next year? 
we, we got, we got through almost, I'm going to say almost the full majority of our winter workouts in for football. Um, our spring sports, you know, were already of course, you know, involved and winter was making, you know, their transition into their off season. Um, so, you know, we did miss a lot of springtime with them. I think more skill wise than anything else, you know, they'd be, maybe be lacking. I think our position coach and our head football coach is most concerned about, you know, missing time with them on the field. I feel as long as they've gone through the workouts that, you know, we prescribed for them, that they will be okay. Um, looking down the road a little bit, I think it all depends on when our state is going to allow us to open. We are planning right now, um, and I'm hopefully finishing up in the next couple of days, is a regular, you know, here is your summer program, as if you have access to your old high school gym or a commercial gym, and here is plan B if you have nothing. Um, we're also discussing worst case scenario, if we're not back in time on, in the fall, you know, what are we going to do on that aspect of it? And we've talked about even trying to supply some of our athletes with, you know, with bands or anything that they can do and then actually go into some live Zoom, you know, virtual workouts, you know, that will be 45, you know, to 60 minutes where they go through their whole workout component. So it's, it, we're really just waiting to see what the state tells us we can do. But as of now, we're planning as if, you know, we're going to be a go, but also, you know, have those backup plans. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, Darby, a question um, for you guys at Privet that came in. Uh, can Privet replace pen, paper, injury record keeping or another replacing another EHR that they currently use? We have the ability to record incidents in our, through our mobile app. We are not a full functioning EHR or EMR. We are more the front end of, of that. We are fully integrated with ATS, uh, which I know is utilized by uh, NJCA members. At this point, our, our focus is on the front end of collecting those preseason medical registration forms and those compliance forms that are required before a student athlete can be cleared to play. While our mobile app does have the ability to track and trace injuries, um, as well as uh, collect some information about an injury, we're not a full use EMR. Can you replace it? To an extent, yes, but do we have all the capabilities of an EMR? No, we don't. We, 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 we have not developed all those. We do have partnerships, like I said, with ATS, uh, with Presagia, and a couple others. We can work on a single sign-on so that if the athletic trainer is working on the tracking and tracing the paperwork and they want to jump over to the EMR, we can do that as well. But really our, our focus right now in terms of our, our full functionality is more on the front end of all of that. Awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, Kristen, a question that came in regarding um, something that you mentioned in your presentation was a check-in process for the fall? And the question is just one to know, what's that mean or what does that look like that you, that you guys are looking to do? Yeah, so we, when I started here four years ago, we, um, you know, we all have that paperwork that we have to have that Darby was kind of talking about, but, you know, they're, they have to have their physicals, they have to have, um, we have a policies and procedures that we make them sign. Um, we do a concussion baseline test. Um, we do an ortho check. Um, trying to think what else. Brett, our athletic director, does his whole spiel. So what we did was we set up um, check-in days. So, you know, let's say soccer, the first day they can practice is August 1. Um, and so we do our check-in with men and women's soccer, um, you know, the, the day or two before when they're coming to campus um, to make sure that they, they have all the paperwork, their insurance card, um, assigned physical, all that stuff. Um, ready to go before they even start practice. Um, that's a requirement that we have. If they don't have that paperwork done, they're not allowed to practice. So um, it's it's usually about a two or three hour, maybe four, if they don't have their stuff together like they're supposed to um, process. But it really it's really been nice to kind of knock it out instead of trying to chase kids all over campus and coaches. And um, it's really a safeguard for us to make sure all the pieces are in place. All right. Uh, Shelly, a question for you. Um, the question is, what is the product that you use instead of tape? Yeah. So we use our iFast for inside a shoe. So for any hardcore athlete, basketball, volleyball, 
um, any, any workout where you're just going to wear your typical shoe, the I fast is what slides inside a shoe. The X fast is what goes over a cleat. So for lacrosse, um, we, we're a sponsor of Major League Lacrosse. So our products worn there for soccer, for football, um, big in football, um, lots of division one and some pro athletes now starting to wear our X fast. So that um, it's, it's clear, it goes over the cleat and it function as the ankle is intended to function until the end range. So the I fast and the X fast are the two that we recommend to replace taping with. Awesome, thank you for that. Welcome, thank you. Um, for Kristen and Mike, um, if, in, if you could uh, have something to add to this question, but when creating home exercise programs for injured athletes, do you have any specific resources that you like to use? Quite, Kristen. Me? <laughs> you can start if you want. Well, I mean, I think, I think we all have, you know, kind of the exercises that we have in our wheelhouse from maybe college or whatever. Um, Darby, shut your ears, but um, Healthy <laughs> Roster has um, – <laughs> <laughs> Healthy Roster has uh, some resources in there. Um, there's videos and things, um, some stretches and stuff that we, that, that's easy for us to drop in their um, file. But, you know, otherwise, I, I don't, I don't think that there's really any, any specific um, resources that we use, just kind of each other and, you know, good old YouTube and Google and stuff like that if we're really stumped. But, um, but other than that, I don't have any specific resources to give you, I guess. I'm, I'm greatly concerned about any of my, especially football guys that are injured, because as you know, if anyone knows in the weight room, there's a, especially in the football team, there's a lot of testosterone. And once they go into the weight room, no one is hurt. So the only thing that I'm taking solace from is that at least if they don't have equipment, they're only doing body weight exercises. You know, I have a lot of guys who will come in with shoulder issues or AC joint issues and who still say they want to clean or snatch. Um, so I know if they really don't have access to that equipment. So that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, I've always, I love using, you know, any kind of strength bands to work with our, you know, any of our injured athletes or those that are nurturing, nursing an injury. Um, and like I said, doing the body weight exercise that I think is really, you know, keeping us, keeping us healthy. I'm um, so far, as far as I know, none of our football guys are, are hurt or injured. Um, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that when I see them again, that they are hundred percent and, and ready to go again. But I love working with bands and I love doing body weight stuff. Um, like you said, even like the plyometrics and stuff that I've been prescribing and any agility stuff, you know, is, is helping them. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier in my presentation is that a lot of my guys are afraid that they're not getting stronger and they're losing some of their strength. And I just, you know, I think it's a good message to, to send is that, you know, control stuff that you can control, control the controllables, is that if you can't get stronger, one thing you can do is you can get outside and you can get faster, you can get better condition and you can get more agile. So, you know, if you are injured in one area, whether it's an upper body injury, then we can work lower body, you know, work on that speed, agility, conditioning, things like that. Awesome. Well, uh, that is all the time that we have today for our webinar. And uh, we definitely appreciate all of our panelists, uh, Kristen and Mike, thank you guys for sharing a lot of uh, a lot of your secrets to the trade, a lot of best practices and what you guys are going through. And uh, Privet, appreciate you all being here to talk about how you can streamline the process for a lot of the the day to day and whatever every athletic department goes through every year with health information and those those documents and and Shelly, the products you guys have that are really beneficial to our student athletes and really changing the industry and and how much all of you guys care uh, care for the NJCAA. So. Uh, thank you all uh, for being here as panelists, and thank you all for being here as attendees to our webinar. Um, our next webinar will be next week, same time. It's going to be Thursday, May 14th at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Our topic next week is extending your brand and content without sports. Um, so something a lot of our athletic departments are figuring out and, and trying to do. So uh, thank you all again for joining us. Uh, please be sure to register for next week's session. Uh, you can do that on connect. You can do that on the, the link that's sent out and you can also find it on social media when it's posted. So thank you all again and we hope you all have a great rest of the day.